Hi everyone! This is a tutorial to get started with WebEx API for those who don't have skills on programming language or have just few skills. And this tutorial will use Python to create a sample script. This is an example of WebEx REST API. We are sending an HTTPS based request and we are receiving a response. This response might contain much more data than what we are looking for. So in this case, we will have to filter data based on our needs. And this is what we will do during this tutorial. In terms of tools, we need an integrated development environment, IDE, such as PyDAR, PyCharm, Atom, and others. I'm currently using PyCharm. And then we need a WebEx calling test organization. In order to get access to a test organization for WebEx calling, you can go in thecloud.cisco.com, search for WebEx calling in the lab offers and subscribe for the lab. So let's get started. This is my lab. Actually, what, you, what I've done, I went into the cloud, went into the catalog and searched for WebEx calling. Take WebEx calling v3 and then you can schedule the lab. Once the lab is scheduled, you can find it here. So in this lab, where if you view the lab, you have the resources tab where all the username and passwords are listed. By using that uh, credentials, you can log in in WebEx Control Hub in your test organization. So this is my user and this is the users that are listed in my organization. Next thing, you also need to go to developer.webex.com where all the APIs are uh, listed. You need to log in with the same admin user in order to get started using your APIs. Now, let's take just one API, like one of the people APIs. So this one, the first one, list all the people inside your organization. How does it work? Basically, this is the GET request, and uh, the GET request is authenticated through a personal access token, which is here. Now, if we run this API, we can see the request, very simple, and the response. The response looks pretty long. So in order to analyze the response, we will copy the response and paste in a txt file. Sorry, let's paste it in, in plain text format. Okay, and now we can save it. Response. Now let's get into the downloads and uh, edit the response name because we want to uh, add JSON as an extension, because in this case, Firefox is able to read this response. Now let's get into Firefox and open this file, response JSON. As you can see here, this is the structure of the response. And you can see that under items, there are eight different records. These records correspond to the people that are listed here in the organization. How do we know that? Because if we click on zero, we can find that the display name is Anita Perez, one of our person in the organization. And we find all the details of Anita Perez. Now let's try to do the same using a Python script. So, now we will create a new, brand new project. Let's call it WebEx Users. And now what we want to do is to uh, make the same request we've just seen. So first of all, we import the requests. As you see here, request is underlined in red, means that it's not been installed. In order to install request, we launch this command, pip install requests. Now, 
now requests will be see the underline disappears and now we can start sending the request first of all uh, what's the url we should send the request to so the url is this one https webxapis.com slash v1 slash people let's copy that and put into a variable url equal to this is the url url and then we can send the request response is the variable where the response will be stored equal to requests dot get this is a get request and then url we want to see the response we will write print print response now let's run it Response is for one, it is forbidden. If we want to see the content of a response, because the structure is that of JSON, we could uh, uh, create another variable, for example, resp equal to response.json. And then we can also print resp. And now the uh, body of the request or the response says that the request requires a valid access token. Okay, so we need an access token. As we saw before, the access token is in the page corresponding to the uh, admin user. So we can copy this. This is valid for 12 hours. If you want a token that is always valid, you need to set up a whole flow. So but this is not part of this tutorial. So our OAuth token is this. Then we need to include a header in our request. For example, header equal to authorization Then we have to include bearer, followed by our access token, our bearer. Okay. So this is the header we'll send. The authorization bearer string followed by the access token, which is a variable, which includes this basically. And then we have to send it in the request. So we will include the headers parameter equal to header. Okay. Now we are expecting that things work differently. And now, in fact, what we see that the response is 200 OK, and we get all the different uh, users with their details. You see the first, uh, Anita Perez. Okay. So now we would like to get the um, email address and the display name. How can we do that? Basically, let's go in the Firefox where we have this uh, you know, uh, record structure. We see that the uh, display name is under the items and under zero. So let's start free here. Uh, display name is equal to resp. And now we have to uh, index with items. So we are taking this, basically, everything that is inside nested here. And then we have to take, in the, to take the zero element. So I'm items, zero. And inside zero, we have the display name. And finally, display name. Similarly, we can get the email doing the same. So the email has in the, the same same level with the display name, but the string is called emails because it's more than one. So let's get this. And now let's take emails. But under emails, we have a nested element. We have zero. So we have to use zero as an index. 
And now we can print display name and uh, email and see what happens. Anita Perez and uh, email, a Perez and so on. So we are in a, in, a, in a good position now. Why? Because we need to iterate this for all the users to get the whole list. So how can we do that? Basically, we need to iterate zero, zero, one, two, three, till the number of users. So let's indicate n, like the number of users. So this is, uh, matches the length of the item string. So the item string is made by these different elements. So the length of response items gives us the number of users. So n will be equal to len, the length of resp items. And now we got the length we can iterate um, in, a, in items. So for j in range n, this is the iteration. And now we can take the display name and email. But now zero is matching only the first record. So we have to replace this with j, because j will take different values starting from zero until n. So zero, one, two, three, until seven. Okay. And now we have also to store this in a, for example, in a list. So let's create this list. Let's call it users equal to an empty list. And then we will uh, append the display name and email to the list. How can we do it? Users.append. And we will append display name and email. At the end, we can print, the end of the loop, we can print users, our uh, list. So let's make it work. So you see here that we have the user list. So each user is uh, inside a list with two elements. So this is a list of lists, it's a nested list. Now, we could also try to print this on a file. In order to do that, let's make a research on the internet. Write a list to a CSV file, Python. Okay, so this seems what we are looking for. Okay, so we need to import CSV here. Details are kind of title, and then the rows are just like our row. It's a, a nested list. So now basically we open this file, and then we create this object, it is a CSV file, and then we start writing the title and, and then the rows. So we can just copy and paste here. So let's copy, paste. So uh, our details, let's call it title, and will be uh, name, yes, and uh, uh, email. Rows, we don't need this because this comes from our file with open student.csv. Let's call it uh, users.csv. If we add the plus sign, means that if the file is not present, it will be created as F. So write CSV writer. So this is, is creating the uh, the right object, you see that CSV is underlined because we have not imported it. So 
import CSV. And I should be back. Right row title. The first row will be title. And the other rows will be what come, comes from the users in this case. Okay, should be all right. Let's start it. Okay, it's finished. And you see that the user has magically appeared here. Let's have a look in Finder. So if we open this, we will see that uh, it is exactly what we were looking for. Basically, basically, it has the name and email, the title that we enter, and then for every uh, name, there is a the email address. You can do uh, also with other fields for telephone number and so on. So now, if you want to try all of this, just go to dcloud.cisco.com and book your WebEx calling lab then download the PyCharm or any other environment and start working with your API. Thanks for watching.